Ah yes, this is a normal way to spend a Wednesday night. 9 p.m. Yeah. Welcome back, my plant cultists. So today we're going to talk about something a little bit different to the rest of my videos so far. Um, I've mentioned briefly my interest and love for entomology and insects in general, and today I figured I'd do a video on the best, in my opinion, a couple of the best insects for plant people to keep. Because they kind of go with the same vibe and, yeah, they're pretty fucking cool. <laughs> so we're going to start pretty simple with uh, some phasmids. Now, if you're not familiar with phasmids, or phasmididae, you gonna focus? There we go. So we'll start simple. Uh, this lovely gal here is a sun guy in expectata. Um, so these guys are extremely common, uh, at least here in Europe, as house pets. They are super interesting, little stick insects. Um, but yeah, so a lot of the species I keep, bar one, are uh, bramble feeders. They're all vegetarian. Um, they are opportunistic, so I'll show you later what kind of species I don't keep together. Uh, the sun guys I keep alone. And then I've got a few other species that I keep. So, this one's a bit of an enigma. Um, it came from an order out of Thailand, I think. Um, but no one I've spoken to is entirely sure, if it'll focus, is entirely sure about what species of stick insect this is. So, it's got these crazy little horns on its head. Um, the person I bought it from had no idea what species it was. Um, and in my research, I've struggled to find things similar to this. Um, so for now, it's just a fun addition to my little collection. Uh, I don't know if they're parthenogenic or if they reproduce via sexual reproduction. That's news to me if they do or don't. Um, if you don't know what parthenogenic means, it just means that the females of the species can just uh, fertilise their own eggs. It's more or less like prolonged mitosis because it's essentially cloning. Um, but there are little differences. And uh, the Sangaya is another example of a species that it very readily reproduces via parthenogenesis. And though there are still males around, they don't really serve much of a purpose, which, um, there's a lot of things you can dissect from that, but we won't, not on this channel, yet, anyway. Now, the last phasmid I'm going to show you is my favourite. Um, this is the reason that I love entomology, because when I was a kid, and I first read about these insects, they entranced me. And now, and a lot of times before this, I've always sought them out. Uh, the genus as a whole entrances me, but this species specifically was my gateway drug into entomology, into herpetology, and eventually into horticulture and botany. And that is the Philium giganteum or the giant leaf insect. Now, as you can see, these guys are incredible. Their camouflage tactics for appearing like a living or dead leaf is unbeatable. Now, the entire species is almost entirely made up of females, um, which again, fun thing to dissect, but parthenogenic, so these lovely sisters will eventually uh, grow a bit, a lot bigger actually, 
and uh, and lay some eggs for me, and then those eggs will hatch, and I'll have a whole bunch of babies. They are a little bit hard to hatch, and when they come out, they are incredibly delicate and tiny, and that's when people tend to lose, if not all, some most, if not all, of their babies because. It's kind of like a begonia on, it's kind of like a really hard to keep begonia on steroids. Like if you miss spraying these as babies a couple times a day, even once, they can just dry out and then they'll just die because they need like constant humidity and water to get past that first really delicate stage of life. But otherwise, when you will see these guys for sale <clears throat> um, and other species like them and other species in their genus, which is Philium, um, you'll see them at a bigger, more stable size. Um, for the most part, they we accept Bramble and anything in the Hawthorn Rose family. Um, I feed these guys a mix of Hawthorn and Rose. Um, you'll see some species that are endemic to certain areas that can take Eucalyptus, particularly the uh, Australasian species that come from this genus. Um, I think the Philium uh, tubularense is one that really likes eucalyptus but uh, these are incredible animals and I knew that people may have a bit of apprehension when it comes to uh, showing bugs and kind of talking and potentially even liking bugs but as far as bugs go you can't really get more planty than this um, we'll try but you really can't. So I'll pop those back on their little makeshift podium that I just sort of cooked up out of a stick and a terracotta pot. <laughs> That's really cute. Yeah, I like that. And we will dive into the second kind of insect that I think will potentially not only intrigue you but if you happen to have any pest problems um, letting these guys kind of roam around your plant collection may just uh, help with that significantly so it's no secret that I like carnivorous arthropods and what carnivorous arthropod lovers collection would be complete without at least one species of mantis. So here we have this very, 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 very tiny little baby Diraplates desiccata or dead leaf mantis. Little focus. So these guys are babies. I've got three of them right now. Oh, she's about angry at me. Uh, I got two females and a male. Uh, me and my friend have been uh, attempting to breed these guys for the past year, and our adult male just aged out. So the two females are now just going to kind of uh, retire without breeding and uh, just be really plump, lovely old gals. And these guys will hopefully be the second attempt at breeding. Um, they are obviously quite young, but they grow fast. Um, and conversely, they also don't live an extremely long time. So if you do want to keep them kind of long term, you will probably want to try and breed them. Um, some species can be parthenogenic of mantis. Uh, I believe the Maya mantis or the Egyptian mantis can be parthenogenic. Um, can be, not will be. It's no certainty when it comes to mantis. They do rely quite heavily on uh, sexual reproduction as opposed to asexual reproduction or parthenogenesis. So, I've got a male, two females. I've showed you some phasmids. I have showed you the Diddy babies. I will insert a photo of some of our adult females just here. And, well, I implore you to look into the world not just of plants, because a lot of entomologists and botanists work really closely with each other because they are really intrinsically linked. And yeah, you may not be into 
you know, millipedes or centipedes or beetles or spiders or scorpions or any other arthropod. But there are some real beauties out there and I do really recommend that you go and check them out. So, thank you for watching. Um, I love you all and uh, have a great week.